I think you I've already heard from AB and Kevin, but we're obviously very excited about what we were able to do, you know, tonight in the first round. Um, when I talked to all of you last week, you know, we talked about, you know, being a team that's really focused on best player available. And I think we ended up in a really fortunate spot tonight where best player available on our board happened to be a position of a real need, you know, on our team. So uh, that doesn't happen every year, but we were fortunate that that was the case. And, you know, we're thrilled to get uh, Jedrick on our team. All right. Thanks, Paul. We'll open up for questions. All right, Daryl, start us off. Hey, Paul, how surprised were you that there were three tackles waiting for you there at number 10? You know, we, uh, Daryl, we went through a lot of different scenarios over the course of the past week um, and really tried to prepare for the worst. Um, so we, we didn't necessarily anticipate that we were going to have any of them to choose from. Uh, we had a lot of different scenarios in mind where, um, you know, that, that they might not be there. But we also thought there was a real chance that, that at least one or two of them could be there. Um, I think we were pleasantly surprised that, that three were there, but, um, but, uh, you know, we, we had run through so many scenarios. We definitely thought that this was at least a reasonable likelihood that we'd have a, we'd have a shot at one of the guys we really like. Uh, we didn't know, necessarily know that we'd have a shot at the, at the top one on our board. So that was, that was a pleasant surprise. Thanks, Daryl. Tom, you're up. Hey, Paul. Thanks. Um, Kevin just called it seamless. He said there were, were no hiccups whatsoever. I'm just curious, could you just talk about the, the symmetry between this new front office? I know it's only one pick and you got a long weekend ahead of you, but, but how did it go from that standpoint tonight? It went really well. I think, I, again, I said this last week, my, my, uh, my biggest regret to date is that we're not all in the building together today, you know, today, tomorrow and, and Saturday in order to enjoy, the, enjoy this together uh, because it really has been a collaborative effort you know, to this point. Uh, and even with this pick, it was, it was highly collaborative. And we were on the phone with, uh, with everybody, uh, even at, even at six 30, you know, tonight, Eastern time with the entire football operation, coaches, scouts, front office people, everybody. Um, so hopefully, uh, everyone is at home as excited as we are, um, you know, collectively. So it, it really has been seamless. Again, we would have liked to have all been there to celebrate together, but, um, I think we've made the most of it. How much how much data is out there, Paul, in terms of guys going from the right side as a college player over to the left side? I know it's it's not unique, but I don't know of a whole lot of examples of it. Sure. Well, I think probably the most prominent one and probably the most important one for us is Tyron Smith, uh, you know, from the Cowboys. And, and it happened to be that the, the coach that oversaw that was uh, was Bill Callahan. That's true. Um, so, you know, he was, he was a dominant right tackle in college. He's a dominant, le he's been a dominant left tackle in the NFL. And, uh, you know, fortunately for us, we have his coach. So, um, you know, uh, one, uh, a sample of one there is not a great, you know, a, a great sample, but, uh, but we know it's possible. I think Bill's excited to have him, you know, in the case of Jedrick too, it's a little different. You know, he was, he was protecting to his blind side in college, you know, with a left-handed quarterback. Um, and that's primarily why he, why he was playing right. And obviously they had Jonah Williams up until this year too, um, playing on the other side. But we're, we're confident that athletically he can do it. Uh, and Bill obviously feels comfortable that he can do it. And, um, you know, we, we, we just think it's uh, not that it will be seamless because I think with every player, as we talked about last week, they all have their growing pains when they get to this level. And, um, you know, I'm sure he'll experience some of those. And also because he has to make the transition to the other side. But we're very confident he'll be able to do it. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Tom. Dan, Lobby, you're up. Uh, yeah, Paul, a Andrew has talked about wanting to remain flexible coming into tonight, but kind of now that it's over, was it one of your priorities to, to try and come out of tonight with your tackle? Yeah, you know, I mean, if things fell the right way, you know, as I said uh, before, we have been really focused on best player available. Um, now, as it turns out, we thought that there were a handful of very good tackles on the board this year, and that is a that it was a real need for us. So it, I think it meshed together nicely, but it wasn't something that we thought we have to we have to do this. Um, you know, in terms of remaining flexible, we we were in contact with teams in front of us. We were in contact with teams behind us. Uh, we were prepared for a lot of different eventualities. And, uh, you know, earlier today, B and I were talking and we said, well, we know when we go to bed tonight, we're going to be a lot better off than we were when we woke up. We just don't know exactly how, you know, and we, we knew there were going to be some really good players available to us at 10. Uh, we just didn't know who they were going to be. Um, as it turns out, we 
you know, got one we're, we're incredibly excited about. Excellent. Tony Grossi, you're up. Hey, Paul. Um, hello, Paul. Um, could you say uh, if Trent Williams was a viable option uh, either today or tomorrow, depending on what you did at 10? Uh, and also one other thing uh, as a follow up, you said uh, you didn't necessarily think you'd have a shot at the top one on your board. Was he the top one of all four of the tackles or just the top one at the time? Uh, so I'll, I'll take the second one first. He was actually the top tackle on our on our board um, from the beginning. So we were, you know, again, really excited. We like, it's a really, really good group of tackles. So that that's certainly not to slight those, those other guys because I think they were they would have all been worthy of being taken, uh, you know, with our pick. But we were, you know, su cer certainly excited about about Jedrick. Um, in terms of the other one, you know, because he still plays for another team, I, I don't really want to comment too much about the player. I will say this: we, you know, throughout the spring, we've we've tried to uh, understand all of the available options to us. You know, especially at a at a position of such importance. You know, left tackle. Um, so we've, you know, we, I think we've kept abreast of the different possibilities. We knew there were some real possibilities in this draft, um, but I think that's really where our focus was ultimately. Um, we did think that. You know, we had a decent shot at one of these guys, you know, uh, falling to us at 10. Um, and I think we were going to wait to see, you know, what happened there before we really pursued, you know, any, any other avenue. Hmm. Thanks, Tony. Scott Patrick. Hey, Paul. Um, did you think there would be more trades ahead of you guys and maybe more conversation about your pick? And if there wasn't as much as you expected, was that – do you think that was because – Everybody's spread out. It's, you know, an unprecedented draft. Yeah, Scott, it's a, it's, it's a good question. I'm not sure. It was funny. After the 12th pick, um, we have a, you know, a, a group chat in addition to our web or a WebEx meeting going on right now. And I wrote in the group chat, when was the last time that we went through the first 12 picks without a transaction? Um, and it was about two minutes later that they, you know, that they announced the swap for 13 and 14. So I think I got my comment in under the wire. Uh, but yeah, I, you know, I don't know what contributed to it. Um, yeah, I think the distance probably has something to do with it, but then again, you know, even in past drafts when we're making deals, you're making them on the phone. Uh, and that's no different, uh, today, you know, than it is if we were all in the draft room, you know, the conversations that you have after you have, after you make the call or after you have the call, those are a little different. Um, and we have to run those a little differently, but I don't think ultimately that that really influenced, uh, the lack of transactions. I think it was, there were a lot of really interesting players, uh, you know, available to teams. And, um, you know, we talked to some teams in front of us in preparation for the draft and kind of everyone said the same thing, which is if, you know, one or two players are available to us, we're going to sit and pick. And I think we kind of felt the same way. You know, if there are certain players available to us, we're going to sit and pick. Otherwise we're, we're interested in moving around, but the way the draft fell, you know, early, uh, it just seemed like the player, uh, the teams that were picking had guys on their board that, you know, that, that, you know, they, they just wanted to sit and pick. And I mean, so for you, if your guy was going to be there at 10, Jedrick, you weren't going to trade down. I no. Mean, obviously you didn't. But yeah. No, no. And we, we, I think there were probably some opportunities too, if we had really pushed it, but no, I think, you know, there were a couple of players where, you know, we, we thought we were going to sit and pick for sure. Thanks. Thanks Scott. Daryl. Uh, Paul, uh, just kind of curious, Andrew said that there was a, you know, obviously a consensus as he went through the collaborative uh, process uh, at 10. Uh, from your perspective and, and uh, where you fit into the puzzle, what was, what separated him from the other tackles? Uh, well, it's a, you know, it's a good question. I think the, you know, all of them were attractive for sort of their own reasons. Uh, we thought that this was a highly unusual tackle class. I mean, this is probably as good an offensive tackle class, certainly since 2016, uh, where you had some awfully good ones, uh, you know, come out early in the first round. You had guys like Ronnie Stanley and Laramie Tunsil and now our, now our own, you know, Jack Conklin, um, you know, very, very accomplished guys. You know, th this class, at least as, as we sit here today, sort of matches up, you know, with that. So it's, um, I, I think when you start separating one from the other, you get a little a little picky because they're all really, really good. And in any normal draft, any one of them could have been, you know, the top tackle, you know, available. Uh, for us with Jedrick, though, I think it was it was the combination of everything. It's obviously playing at a place like Alabama, 
the coaching he's already gotten, uh, his athleticism, uh, and his, his smarts. You know, and this, this is a very, uh, very bright guy. Um, I think he's really advanced from a football knowledge standpoint. Um, but uh, we think mentally he's, he's advanced. Uh, and, he's, and he's just a mature person. I, you know, he's, he's a pro, uh, I think, already. That doesn't mean he's not going to have a lot of things to learn and he's not going to have to grow in different ways. But we just really liked his approach to the game. And you know, we've talked a lot about uh, finding players that are smart, tough, and accountable. Uh, and we, we felt like he really, you know, checked all three of those boxes. Excellent. Mary Kay, you're up. Um, hey, Paul. Um, would you say, I mean, that you got that you had these tackles maybe so closely ranked or thought so much of them that if any one of the top four that we have been talking about this whole time had been available to you at number 10, that you would not have had to to go outside the draft to find your left tackle? Um, I don't know if I'd go sort of quite that far. Um, but there are, you know, there were certainly guys that we liked. Um, we also thought there were some other, you know, non-tackles that we liked, uh, that we would have, you know, been excited to take at 10 if, if in fact there had been a run on tackles early in front of us. And then we, you know, would have, would have then gone, you know, in another direction, um, in terms of finding an answer there. Uh, but, um, you know, but, but we liked, we, we, we liked them you know, certainly quite a bit, but I think there were some at least differences in terms of the way we felt about each individual guy. And that probably would have changed. It probably would have changed our strategy a little bit, depending on who was there. But again, that ultimately was something we weren't faced with since, since the top guy was there. I mean, can you be any more specific? Like, can you say if your two top favorite offensive tackles, you know, would have been gone, you might have gone in another direction? Um, I think it's hard, hard to say. Um, and I probably won't, won't share exactly how our board lined up. Um, okay. but we're certainly happy with the way it ended up. Thank you. Thanks, Mary Kay. Nate. Hey, Paul, you, you mentioned Bill Callahan and the Tyron Smith connection. So how strong was Bill in his belief, um, uh, that Jedra can do this well? Uh, the, the move from from right tackle to left tackle, and and how much of a factor was his voice? Sure. Well, I, I don't want to put too much on Bill because I think that would be that would be unfair. But you know, we certainly you know we certainly weighed his opinion pretty heavily. You know, in in this group, uh, and he and he absolutely felt confident that this was something that uh, was possible and that Jedrick you know could do. Um, now, again, that doesn't mean it's 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 going to be flawless, but um, but I think he has a strong belief that Jedrick's capable of doing this, um, and that definitely weighed heavily. I mean, if he if, if he had come to us and said, "Listen, th this is highly unlikely that he could he could make such a transition," um, you know, then then I don't think he would have been the top guy on our board. All uh, right, I think we'll we'll take one more. Barry Pluto, you're up. Well, I was just wondering when did your board get set for the tackles where Jedrick emerged? Like, I'm always just curious when they kind of figure out when this is the tough, guy, uh, the top guy and maybe what it was that uh, I did hear you talk about the smart, tough, accountable part, but also what else did, uh, differentiated him. But when, when did he become number one? Yeah, you know, so we had, Terry, we had uh, scouting meetings. I'm trying to think of our schedule back in February. Uh, mm -hmm. before going to the combine and we set at, at least at that point we had sort of separated the top guys and maybe had a preliminary ranking um, but it, it was far from being set in stone in fact it was probably in the uh, light pencil you know at that point and then uh, we had additional meetings in early April um, and then we also had meetings with our coaching staff in early to mid-April um, and I think it, it wasn't really until after all those um process were complete that we had, you know, we had our order. So I would have said it's probably um, thinking about the calendar, maybe two weeks ago uh, mm -hmm. when it was, uh, you know, when it was set the way it ended up turning out. Do we have a, a Zoom thing with him or whatever? Oh, am I yeah, gone? So our, our, our coaches, you know, our coaches did. Um, yeah, I just wondered how he, will you, do you guys obviously I would think of what presented him. Hey, how do you feel about playing left tackle? Can you do it? Did you do it in high school or anything like that? Was there any, can you give us any uh, info on that? 
Sure. You know, I wasn't on the call, uh, mm-hmm. so I don't know exactly what was discussed, but I know that they they did address it. Um, uh, and, and I think everybody felt comfortable about, you know, about his ability to do it. 